Welcome everyone. Our collective time of worship is about to start here in a minute, but I wanted to first take a moment and say thank you. Uh, Life Connection Baptist has been trying to uh, go online for a while now, and this uh, global crisis has kind of catapulted us there um, maybe a little sooner than we were quite ready for. Um, but I tell you, I've been overwhelmed with just praise of God over how well this has been received. And, and honestly, the way it's spread so far and fast is just awe-inspiring. Uh, so if you're local here to the church property, uh, you probably need to know that there are more than double the normal number of people that we would physically have in the building when we were meeting uh, that are with us right now to give worship and praise to our God. And that means that we've got you know, families in the area, you know, maybe with young kids. Uh, I've been there. I remember those days when just getting all your little ducklings in a row is, is all you can manage, a little less getting them out the door. But because we're online like this, they get to be here. You get to be a part of our worshiping God together, and that just brings such joy to my heart. Um, I know we've also had some uh, soldiers and their families, you know, uh, they were deployed overseas and they came back and now they're in quarantine and they would be stuck there and this wouldn't be an option for them except now we're online and because of that, again, you get to be here worshiping together with us. It is a beautiful thing. Uh, but what you local folk might not know is that there's also a worldwide congregation of Life Connection going on right now, a, a congregation that tunes in every week. And uh, while the first couple hours here when this initially comes online uh, will be 80, 90% local, over the course of the next 24 hours, that number will more than double uh, from overseas. And so I say welcome to all of you, all of uh, our congregation across the globe. Many of you are, are military, deployed in other parts of the country or maybe overseas. Uh, maybe you were once here local to the church, but now you're scattered far and wide. Or maybe, maybe you're friends with someone who was here at one time and uh, they invited you to, to tune in with us. Either way, I want to say thank you for letting us be a part of your Sunday and, and worshiping together with us. Uh, the interesting thing, though, is that some of you, I have no clue how you found our little church in Kansas, but I thank God for the joy of sharing uh, together in worshiping Jesus Christ. This is all for Him. Uh, it's all His work, and it's all for His glory. Uh, so wherever you are, here, there, far and wide, no, you are a loved and prayed for part of this family, and you are all welcome here as we worship Christ together. Oh, and one more thing, as you perhaps think about how, how easy it is now to, uh, to participate in worship together like this, maybe there's someone you know, someone on your mind right now that you're like, you know, they could be encouraged, they could be uplifted by some time just giving praise to God and feeding on His Word. Let me encourage you. This is how a lot of people got started. Just take your phone right now, text them. Invite them to worship with you today. Um, send them the, the link to uh, lifeconnectionbaptist.org. Um, send them to YouTube. Honestly, if they can reach YouTube, they can be a part of this. There's no preparation involved. And so they can participate, and maybe they can be blessed as well. Uh, but again, friends, I say thank you. Thank you for your love of God and your desire to, to worship Him regularly. And, and thank you for the priv privilege of letting me serve as your pastor. Let's pray. Father, we come today seeking your glory seeking to touch your heart and to worship you. To that end, we offer ourselves all that we are and all that we have. We know comes from you. You are our provider, our defender. You are life and light and the source of grace. And so we offer back to you, Lord, what you and your love have already given to us. 
We are your servants. We are your children by grace in Christ Jesus. And our prayer, Father, is that you would be glorified in us today. Receive our worship, our praise, and our love. For you are worthy. And we proclaim your great worth with joy today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to our back deck. And I uh, just thought we'd share worship with you here with the birds and probably some dogs and the wind and uh, mowers. <laughs> mowers. Just praise from here. So just join us in worship um, right where you are. Sing with us. Stand, sit, lift your hands, but worship with us this morning. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day.
before we do this last song Deuteronomy 6 9 know therefore that the Lord your God is good he is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations to those who love him and keep his commandments he's faithful again over in Psalm 36 starting in verse 5 your love Lord reaches to the heavens your faithfulness to the skies your righteousness is like the highest mountains your justice like the great deep you, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is a fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Just thought that verse go with the next um, great hymn of faith that we're gonna sing in Great is Thy Faithfulness. So join us in that. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great Sin and a 
One day, all of us who are in Christ Jesus will know the joy of worshiping Him perfectly. Uh, but in the meantime, I have to personally say I have found uh, great freedom here in these last couple of months to worship together with my family. Um, I don't think we even realize just how much sometimes we put a sense of obligation and uh, expectations on each other uh, when we come together in person. But this past month, that just hasn't been there. And don't get me wrong. I, I long to come back together, to, to be able to worship together with you with less than six feet between us. But maybe, just maybe, we can bring back a bit of this, this freedom with us. Uh, some of this joy-filled freedom in worship. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, you know, maybe that is, hasn't been what has really hit you in the last month, and that's fine. I, I know God is, is working good for His people from whatever's going on in our lives right now, and you know, I can't wait, honestly, to sit down and hear from you what God is teaching you through this, this lockdown over the past couple of months. Uh, but we just know that whatever is going on, our God is faithful, and He is in this and, and leading us and bringing good out of it in our lives for His glory. Amen. Uh, so last week, though, we moved in our study of the topic of biblical joy into a study of the letter of joy, the letter of uh, Philippians, where Paul wrote to them. Now, normally, when I would move into a book study, I would have planned ahead, and I'd have, you know, a four to seven week plan where you know we're going to move through the book and we're going to you know look at the topic and pull the the highlights out of it uh, on that topic. This time, however, I really feel we need to to slow down and, and dig deep. Uh, I think we need to be reminded, or even <laughs> let's be honest, flat out uh, learn what joy is, where it comes from, how we can, um, to use a, a good biblical word, how we can abide in his joy, how we remain in it, how we stay in the joy of the Lord. Uh, so honestly, I have no idea how long we're going to be in Philippians. We will be in Philippians until God says, move on. Fair enough? Well, good, I can't hear you. So if you disagree, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> no. Uh, but at this point, if I were in, the, in a series, you and I would be starting out with, with a quiz. You know this. I, I'm going to be looking as a way to review, to ask you questions and expect you to answer. Something tells me with the current format, that's going to be difficult. So instead, how about some fill-in-the-blank questions, all right? Here we go. Here, here are the, some fill-in-the-blanks for you. Our definition of biblical joy. Biblical joy is our what to experiencing the what of Jesus our blank to experiencing the blank of Jesus here's a free one biblical joy is an emotion next biblical joy is a gift from the blank 
Biblical joy is not dependent on our blank. And another freebie, biblical joy is commanded by God. All right, let's look back over those. Our definition, biblical joy is our response to experiencing the glory of Jesus. Biblical joy is an emotion, and it is a gift from the Holy Spirit. It is not dependent on our circumstances. Rather, it is commanded by God. So how would you do? Are you starting to, to get that definition in your, your heart and mind? Are you uh, beginning to know what biblical joy is and understand that? Uh, true knowledge is definitely a piece of God's transforming work in our lives through Christ Jesus. And in this case, it's, it's the knowledge, the truth that allows us to learn to live in and even lean into that joy from God, the joy that Jesus himself prays that we would have. Um, today, I want us to look at two specific types of joy, uh, two specific sources of joy in Jesus Christ. They are, first, the joy of recollection, that's the joy of remembering, and second, the joy of intercession, the joy of prayer. Now, for the most part, we're going to stay focused in verse 3 of chapter 1, uh, but let's go ahead and read the first six verses again uh, to have a little bit of context going forward. Paul and Timothy, voluntary servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would open your word to us today and teach us of yourself that you would let us see and praise the glory of your Son, Jesus, and in the light of his glory and truth, be ever more transformed into his likeness. This we pray in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. All right, let's look back closer at verse 3 then. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy, in my every prayer for you all. Okay, so we're looking at joy, that, that spirit-given gift that transcends the circumstances of our lives, that allows us to endure and to do so with, with peace and confidence and hope. But it's not enough to just know that joy is given us by God. We need to understand some specifics. I mean, what can we do? What, where can we go mentally and spiritually that we can put ourselves in the place where we are most ready to receive the joy of the Lord that he tells us is our strength? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, so here we are in this one verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 3, and Paul is showing us two specific actions, two thought patterns, if you will, that align us with the spirit that is eager to give us his joy. And for Paul, I mean, those are his memories of the, of the uh, Philippians and his prayers for them. So let's try to understand how, how remembering and praying, how recollection and intercession helps put us in a place to receive God's joy. We already talked a bit about this last week, how uh, Paul has a very close relationship with the, with the Philippians. Uh, but let's dig a little deeper. Uh, in order to build a synagogue, you had to have a certain number of Jewish men. And there wasn't a synagogue in Philippi, so apparently there weren't enough men there. But what there was, was a gathering of Jewish women. And, and you know, I really do find it interesting because if... You ever get into that situation where you know the men really aren't pulling their weight and, and they're not doing what they're supposed to. 
I tell you, it's the ladies. They're going to step up and they're going to hold the, the synagogue, the church, together. If there had been a group of Jewish men meeting, Paul would have gone to them first. But he goes to the women's group, right? And never underestimate the importance of and strength of ladies of faith, because I tell you, they are the backbone of any strong con congregation. So, you know, when the men can't be bothered, when they're too busy, or whatever, it's the women that hold things together, right? So here Paul is basically going to the Jewish women's auxiliary, and there he meets Lydia. Lydia is a seller of purple. Now, that means in that day, one, she's a businesswoman, and two, she's a very rich businesswoman. You see, purple was both very expensive and very rare. In fact, uh, in many times in ancient times, purple was reserved for uh, the royalty. Uh, and so this lady would have been a real high-class wheeler and dealer. And here she was at the Jewish women's group, and she heard Paul, and it says she immediately believed his message. In fact, she believed it, and she took Paul back to her home with, him, with her, and he led the entire household into faith in Christ and being baptized. And at, boom, the church is born there in her house. In fact, the church will meet now in Lydia's home. You can read about that in Acts chapter 16 if you want. Uh, later, Paul and Silas, as they're traveling along, they bump into a, a slave girl and her masters. Now, she was possessed by a demon, and her owners were using her to, uh, to fortune tell. And basically, they were, they were making a lot of money off of this girl. Well, Paul comes along, and he casts the demon out of her. Uh, and great for her. And I, we don't know. We don't hear any more about the girl. But, you know, I like to think... Now that she's freed from this demon, I, I, I pray she came to faith in Christ. And so maybe she, in her new freed and transformed life, is now a part of this church. But while that's good for her, not so much for her, her owners. Uh, they basically just lost the golden goose. So they have Paul and Silas thrown into prison. And you might think that's a bad thing. You know, I mean, they, they get beaten. They're locked in, in, in chains. But what do they do? That night, they're singing praises. They're having a worship service in the jail. And the Bible tells us at midnight, there was an earthquake, and all the doors to the jail cells popped open. And the jailer who was there, when he awoke and saw all the cells open, he assumed everybody had escaped. And so he draws his sword, and he's about to kill himself. When Paul cries out, and he's like, don't hurt yourself. Because all of us, all of us are still here. Guys, the, the prisoners didn't try to escape. That must have been some really powerful worship service going on there. But the jailer is like, you're all here. And, and so he wants to understand and you know, to make a medium story a shorter story. And the jailer wants to know how to be saved. And Paul and Silas tell him he gets saved. And the jailer takes Paul and Silas back to his house. And his whole household gets saved. And you know, so, boom, you now have, you've got a church. You've got this rich businesswoman in her household. Maybe you've got this uh, ex-demon-possessed girl. And you have this man who's likely a retired uh, Roman legionnaire in his household. And you've got a church. And Paul loves these people. He loves them dearly. His memories of them are so sweet. But more than that, he's remembering God's work among them. And even though he at the time is, is chained and imprisoned, remembering what God is doing among them fills him with joy. And, and, and their love, in turn, for Paul is evidenced by the fact that they, they took up this collection for his needs, and they send it by one of their best men. They send it by Epaphras, and he wasn't just there to deliver their message and their gift. He was there to serve Paul as long as Paul needed him. And all of this comes together, all these memories of, of the past and even uh, the recent memories of the gift and Epaphras just put Paul in this place where the Spirit is able to constantly renew him in joy. I tell you, that was truly a wonderful reminder for me as well, though, because I started looking back at the memories we share together over these last 10 years, and uh, memories that even today still fill me with joy. Uh, I, I also asked him, you know, what are the 
the, the first things you, you think of and make a list. And it shouldn't surprise me at this point, but the first thing on both our lists was the same. It was the, the pounding that the church gave us when we, we moved here. Uh, if you don't know what a pounding is, that's where you, you bless somebody as they're moving into the area. You, uh, you fill their cupboard with the basics, your flour, your sugar, you know, cereal. You, and y'all put meat in the freezer and drinks in the fridge. I, I think there was a, a, a bottle of ketchup that lasted like three or four years. I mean, y'all piled us up when we arrived, and, and that just meant so much to us. Uh, we had come... Not immediately, but we had come from a rough experience with the church prior, and, and we were still nervous. We were a little afraid of, of what we were getting ourselves into, and I remember we cried together in, in joy that night when we saw what y'all had already done in just welcoming us. Oh, oh! but the, the funniest part of it, though, y'all also provided meals for us there at the beginning when we moved in. And one night, LaVon, uh, that's Vicky's mom, uh, brought dinner over for us, and it, it was a great spread, and she was an awesome cook. But the highlight of that meal, there was this, this large container that, that, was, that said uh, many eclairs on it. And, and if you don't realize it, I think my wife has a thing for eclairs like I have a thing for chocolate chip cookies. And... Um, we saw that, and we were excited, and we put that in the freezer for dessert, and you know, we had, had our family dinner, and it was wonderful, but we were, we were looking forward to those eclairs, okay? So we finish eating, and I go to the freezer, and I, I pull that box out, and I take walk in, I set it down on the table, and we open it up, and there in front of us, already beginning to be partially frozen, is a bunch of pasta salad. <laughs> I'll admit it was a little disappointing at the moment because we were so excited about eclairs, we had to go get some. Uh, <laughs> but we've all done this. You know, you, you reuse those containers, and, and this was a large container, and wow, it was full of pasta salad, and we still laugh our heads off about that today. Um, we also, in our list, we put down, you know, when Nathan had his first seizure and, uh, and a couple years later when he had brain surgery and just the love and the grace that uh, the church showed us in the midst of all of that. I remember uh, calling um, Ken that morning in a panic and he just said, I got it. And he took care of service and uh, Kim and I hit the road and followed the helicopter to Kansas City. Uh, Amazingly, not, well, I mean, it was two hours after church was over. So as soon as church is over, the Knolls left and they came up to Kansas City and, and just were there for us. And that was just so powerful. I mean, we, we didn't expect anyone to drive that far, but, you know, we've learned and we see now that's, that's what you do for family and y'all are family and, and, and the love we share is so precious. Or a couple of years later, Kim uh, shared this one again with me where uh, Betsy really didn't want to come to Kansas City and wait for hours and hours and hours for uh, the surgery because we had a lot of prep stuff to do. She, you know, she just didn't want to just sit and stew and I don't blame her. Uh, so she was like, can somebody just bring me? And we're like, really, honey? That's just like a four hour drive just so you can be late. But Christy Heyman's like, I'll do that. And, and so there we were, and, and right on time, Betsy gets to come in, and Christy had brought her, and it was just such a, a blessing. Or, or Nate, just being there that whole day and just, just being with us. Uh, friends, there's just so much love and joy that I can dip into thinking back over these last 10 years. Or... Kim reminded me over this, and it tickles me. You know, all the pastor appreciation gifts y'all give. Um, it is a beautiful and a wonderful thing, but I think the, the best part about it is the fact that I'm, you know, probably 19 out of 20 times, I'm going to be genuinely surprised because I completely forget about it. And I'm like, what are you doing interrupting the service? We're, oh, yeah. And so, you know, every year I'm honestly surprised. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't use that as an example of, you know, uh, finding joy in your memories. But, you know, 
my memory being what it is, I can remember being surprised all those times, and it is a delight. Uh, more than that, though, I think about all the people that we together have been a part of leading to the Lord. I, I think about uh, the 30 to 40 folks we've baptized here in the last 10 years. Two of my kids. I've gotten to baptize two of my own kids here. In fact, I've got a third who, who's just waiting for the lockdown to be over. I mean, friends, there is just so much joy in remembering the good that God has done. You know, the wisdom of the world today tells us we are shaped a lot by how and what we think about. Well, that's true. God even told us that, you know, 2,500 years ago in Proverbs. But the fact of the matter is we get to choose how we're going to think. We can, we can choose to look at the difficulties, to look and uh, to recall the pains and, and the losses in our life. Or we can choose to set our minds on the good things God has done and in doing that find joy. Uh, and, and in finding joy, find, therefore, the strength of the Lord we need for today. Uh, in fact, Paul is going to explicitly tell us this in chapter 4, verse 8, uh, where he says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there is anything excellent, anything worthy of praise, dwell on, think on these things. And I would add from another scripture, because I think it fits, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Friends, that is the strength to be found in joy, found by recalling God's greatest moments in your life, in our life together. And when you look back at God's faithful work and you remember and you experience that joy afresh, you, you are putting yourself in the place of thankfulness and praise, a place where the Spirit is going to pour His joy out into your life. Uh, Isaiah 26.3 says, You, O Lord, will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed, whose mind remains on you. Friends, that is the joy of recollection, the joy of remembering. But Paul doesn't stop there with just fond memories. He, he moves immediately from recollection to intercession, and I think that's intentional. Uh, remembering in joy leads Paul straight into praying from joy. As he says in verse 3, he's always offering prayer with joy in his every prayer for the Philippians. And what exactly does Paul pray for them? Well, in verses 9 through 11, he at least gives us one specific example. He prays that your love, their love, may abound, that it may abound even more than it already does, abound so much that it shapes your knowledge and discernment, that applied wisdom. Uh, in other words, uh, that you'd then therefore be able to approve, to know and affirm what is excellent, not just good, excellent, what is godly and beneficial. So basically, Paul is praying that their love would grow so much that their knowledge and wisdom would be shaped by that love to the point they recognize God's best. And not just recognizing, but then choosing that best and therefore standing sincere and blameless until Christ returns. Man, that's some deep prayer. But where does that deep prayer come from? It comes from a heart filled with joy. And where does it go to? Well, it, it moves from the heart filled with joy into prayer, prayer towards a life that is ever more filled with and shaped by the love of God in Christ Jesus. And I tell you, there is joy in praying like that for the people he loves. I mean, a couple things to consider here. First of all, Paul's circumstances are likely way worse than anything the Philippians are dealing with. I mean, he's, he's chained, he's in prison, he doesn't know what the future holds, but what's he praying for? He's praying for their good, he's praying for their blessing. Why? Because he loves them and it fills him with joy to lift their needs to the Lord. 
And second, I think there's a special kind of joy here for Paul when he's praying for their continued growth and faith and love. I mean, you have to remember a lot of the time uh, when Paul is praying for people in churches, he's praying for God to fix things. Uh, because let's, let's face it, we're human and, and we, we make mistakes and we make messes. And, and the Philippian church has a few things he's going to address. But mostly, I think, he's able to look at this church with just the joy of knowing they are pursuing and growing in God. Um, this is a church that is ready for God to move in and through them. They, they have a strength and a growing faith that I think brings great joy to Paul. And so praying for them is not even burdened by you know, a lot of sin. Prayer is just, God, do your amazing work in their lives. And, and so I thought back. I thought about all of you and, and, and personally how I've gotten to see you grow over the last you know, 10 years or so. I, I think of, of Daryl as he tears up just thinking about people needing Jesus and the love he has for people he doesn't necessarily even know, but he wants them to know Jesus. I think of Laura and the way her spirit has become so much more gentle in the last 10 years. I look at Dave, who is just growing as a godly leader, and his wife, Chris. I'll never forget when she came to me after the series we'd been on, and she's like, I, I heard God speak to me for the first time, and I tell you, it fills my heart. I, I think about Andy and Vicki, who, you know, they're in this lockdown right now, and they're like, yeah, no sweat. We went 18 months locked down, and they came out of that stronger and looking more like Christ. Friends, this is the kind of joy that I have in you as I look back. And, and I can go on. I think of Dozy, those 11 years here in, in a tank, his joy. But now he's on the other side of the country. He's living by himself. He doesn't get to be in a tank. But whatever is happening, he's still living for Jesus. I, I think about Curtis. You know, he, he wrestles with confusion, but he is still growing so much in Christ. And I see him sharing that on Facebook all the time. I think about Gloria and her, her sweet childlike faith, or, or Chris Stiltner just waking up to Jesus a few years ago and just being so on fire for the Lord. I think of the hats who have had the <laughs> the joy of uh, discipling Kim and I as we learn to uh, to parent adults. Thank you so much. Uh, Ken and LaVon, Wes and Lori, Dan and Susan. I mean, I can't even list everyone. I, I actually did that once. I I was writing down a list of all the people I've had the privilege of impacting their lives since being here, and, and I had to stop somewhere over 300 people. It was just so overwhelming and so joyful. Uh, Y'all have been such a blessing and an impact on my life because I have the privilege of being a part of yours. And friends, that's the kind of joy I think Paul had as he looks back on his friends and he prays for them. It is a joy to pray for you. It is a joy to pray for God to move in your lives. But more than that, to see over time God being faithful to that. Friends, just the joyous memories we share, giving rise to joyous prayers. And I think all of that rests on the foundation of verse 6 where Paul says, I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Friends, that, that is a piece of what it means to put yourself in the place where the Spirit can fill you with his joy, your strength. Remembering the past and what God has done in joy, leading that from that to praying from joy. So we can look ahead and know in joy God is going to move and work. So let me ask you then, as we kind of wrap up here, what would you say fill your thoughts? So what where would you say your prayers are centered? I, I've been really convicted over this uh, this past week. You know, God lays out here for us how to live in joy, and yet how often are my thoughts uh, not where God can bless me with that joy? You know, how often 
are my thoughts just basically complaints or, or selfish thoughts of what I want and what I like or don't like? Prayers. Our prayers can be the same way. And there's nothing wrong, understand, for praying for yourself. We should pray for ourselves. But where do my prayers linger? Am, am I mostly caught up in Lord, with Lord? You know, I want this. I need that. Fix this, please. Uh, you know, I tell you, there's not a lot of joy there. Honestly, the more I see my need, uh, the less joy I have. The less joy means the less strength and basically is evidence of less Jesus in my life. By contrast, remembering the good God has done has just left me on an emotional high this week. Looking back at the precious moments of God working uh, in the lives of others and being a part of that, uh, the chance to pray for them, for you, and, and see the good God brings out of that over time. Friends, that is where the joy and the strength is found in these two areas, um, where our thoughts and our actions can intersect with the gracious flood of joy that is poured out moment by moment by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, honestly, I used to think the whole Jesus in heaven praying continuously for us, interceding to the Father for us, must be a really depressing and, and thankless job for him. Oh, how wrong I was. My, my understanding of our Lord was, was, was short and inadequate. Because you see, Jesus knows this secret of joy. He knows that praying for us is how he gets to see the Holy Spirit move in our lives. And he's not praying for us from a burden. He is praying for you in, from, and through joy right now. He knows the Father delights in his children. He sings over us from joy. And he longs and he will reshape his children into the likeness of his Son. And so he's living in that joy of the the work of God today, the promise of God coming, and knowing that the joy of the Lord is his strength, and it is ours if we will rest in it. Uh, friends, maybe, maybe you're feeling a bit convicted over all of this. I, I get it. Coming face to face with you know, the lack of joy in our lives all too often, and, and you know, that, maybe that self-centered thinking that we all too often turn to, I'm there with you, and and you know, okay, maybe I'm a half a week ahead of you because I, I I spent time working on this message. But from that brother who is a half a week ahead, let me help you out. All right, the past is gone. Your sins. If you are in Christ, they are forgiven, and they are as far from you as the east is from the west. Today, today you. Get to choose afresh where you're going to let your mind rest. Are you going to choose to, to look back and remember the joys of God's work in your life, of God showing up in the lives of those you love? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to instead choose to dwell on, on the self and the, the, the selfishness, the way you don't like things going and all the hardships you're facing? I tell you, one is going to leave you empty and one is going to move you towards joy. And then when you've decided which way you're going to go, if you're going to decide to follow those joy-filled memories, ask yourself this next question. From looking back at that joy-filled time, what memories of God's love are you going to make today? Because as he has worked in the past, he is still willing and wanting to act in your life now. Where are you going to allow him to work today so that in the future, you can look back to today with joy. When you look back at 2020, are you going to look back at the, the, the rough lockdown and, and the virus and all the bad things? Or are you going to choose today to build into your life the workings of the Holy Spirit in such a way that when you look back, you'll say 2020 was a year of God's grace and power moving in my life? Or are you going to choose momentary pleasures and, and, and the long-term dissatisfaction that they bring? 
Or instead, will you choose the joy of the Lord that is the strength to make it through today and no joy tomorrow? And beyond that and the memories, what what joy-filled prayers are you going to lift today? What prayers will you take before the throne of God today that you're going to celebrate God's faithful work in tomorrow and next year and in the next decade? Whose life are you pouring prayer with love into? Whose life are you from joy praying that they would know and grow and their love would abound? Or are you praying that everything will hurry back to normal? I, I know I've been a lot, but I've been convicted. Why should we pray to go back to a normal when we can be praying for God's transforming work that can leave normal behind in the dust? God is even now keeping his promise to bring good out of even the greatest evil for those who love him. God is moving and at work and he longs with joy to not have us go back to good or normal, but to move into better and excellent. He is working and he is faithful and true to let his love complete that work in you and in others that bring us into the likeness of Christ. Or maybe that joyous memory that you need to make today is is the joyous memory of accepting Jesus as your savior, savior in the first place saying goodbye to the me, me, me life and and turning from your sin and accepting the grace that was bought by the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe the prayer that you need to be to lift today is the prayer that starts a relationship of grace with him where he comes and he takes your sins and puts them on himself and in place of your sin he takes his righteousness and places it on you and declares you forgiven and adopted a child of almighty god but here's the thing friends you get to choose You get to choose today where your mind will go, where your prayers will be. You get to choose today between self or the Lord. You get to choose between the weights of this world or the joy of the Lord that is your strength. And what you choose today will reshape all your tomorrows to come. Pray with me. Father, I would have everyone who is hearing me speak today hear not me but your voice, calling them to a life of joy and grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that they would turn from sin and self, that they would embrace the life of grace in the Spirit and learn to live by joy by the love that abounds more and more from you pouring into and through us. Father, I pray that you would teach us to look for you and enjoy you in every moment of the day and allow our minds to rest on what is good and what is excellent. Lord, I pray that you would shape the very mind and life of Christ in each of us. So that rather than seeing us in our failures, the world increasingly sees him in his glory and his grace. Father, that one day through our lives, we might look back and say, you have used us mightily. And that we might even be filled with your joy afresh as we remember the ways you moved in and through us to reach out in your love and grace to all around us. Father, be glorified in our lives, be lifted high, and may the name of Jesus flow from us as we become ever more like him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Kevin, for that message. Let's just end by giving him thanks today. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever.